Well, we have a very, very informative program for you today. My guest is Bill Salas, the author of a book called Israel Stein. Now, that might sound like a strange title, but uh, it's exactly what many of our politicians in America and most of Europe wants to happen. Uh, can there really be peace in the Middle East? Bill is going to be talking to us about the origins, the true origins, the biblical origins of the Palestinian Israel conflict. It's not going to go away anytime soon, and it didn't start recently. It goes way, way back. And so on the program today is the author of a very interesting book. It's called Israel Stein, The Ancient Blueprints of the Future Middle East. Uh, welcome Bill Salas to the program today. Bill, welcome. It's great to have you. John, thank you. I want to start right from what just jumped out at me in this book as I, as I browsed through it, Bill. And that was Psalm 83. That just jumped out at me. Uh, that the intent of the Arab world always has been and continues to be the absolute destruction of Israel. That ultimately giving back land or giving land for peace is a fallacy. Talk about that. Well, yes, Psalm 83, which is sort of the central theme of the book, is a prophecy that Asaph wrote, the uh, David's worship leader, about 3,000 years ago, that talked about an Arab confederacy of 10 populations that will someday come together and seek the mandate of cutting the nation of Israel off, that the name of Israel will be remembered no more. And as we look throughout time, although these populations that Asaph lists in there, which are the populations that closely surround Israel today, um, although they've warred against Israel throughout time, uh, individually and sometimes collectively, they never have all together at one given time tried to come against Israel in a confederate fashion. So therefore, this is a Bible prophecy that is yet to find final fulfillment and highly likely could be the next Bible prophecy to find fulfillment. Well, let me back up a little bit because uh, 25 years ago when I was introduced to Bible prophecy, it was a ten-nation confederacy made up of the revised Roman Empire. I see a revived Roman Empire okay. with a Euro base. And okay. I do, I particularly subscribe to that being a very powerful um, ent entity on the scene, perhaps even from which the Antichrist well, would arrive. Let, let's focus on the Arab uh, Confederacy because this is where the world is looking right now. Right. And, and again, the theme of the book. You know, when Asaph wrote, he didn't have uh, terms like Palestinians and Hezbollah and Jordanians and things back in his vernacular. So he was talking about Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, Ishmaelites, Hagarines, and ten in total of, by the, the populations of what he knew them as. And who they are today is Lebanon to the north, and of course you have Hezbollah there, and he referred to them as the inhabitants of Tyre. Then you have Syria, referred to as Assyria, um, to the northeast. You have Jordan, which was represented by the Edomites, Moabites, and Ammonites. And you have Saudi Arabia, the Ishmaelites, he lists them. Then you have uh, Egypt, the Hagarines are listed in there. Hagar was the matriarch, the mother of Ishmael. Then you have Philistia, which coincidentally is where the Gaza is today. And the Hamas, of course, hail there. And he talks about the tents of Edom. And I, I ta have a chapter in the book called The Hudamites, where I follow the trail, the migratory trail of the Edomites. And we find out that they have ethnical representation in the Palestinians. And when he refers to them as the tents of Edom, biblically tents of refer to either a refugee condition or a military encampment. So I see them as the Palestinian refugees. So we're dealing with Israel's most observable enemies today that surround them that will one All day... All in place. As you see it, everything's in place, isn't it? Now? Everything is in place. The attitude has been around since time immemorial. And now the means to come against Israel and one final Arab climactic confederacy uh, the arsenals are there, and, and so they could actually come forward with that at this point. Now, talk about 1948, when Israel declared uh, uh, statehood, and then 1967, mm -hmm. with a brief uh, tension in 1956, uh, and then 73, three efforts to destroy uh, Israel, all failing. It, it, why, do you, why? Why did they fail? Well. I believe that the Israeli Defense Forces, which we're seeing forming presently, and I'm going to 
preface it with this comment to get in to answer your question, are in existence and fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Ezekiel 37 says it would come a time when the Jewish people would meet a Holocaust-type condition and out from that condition be brought back into the land. And, of course, we know that is what happened in, in World War II. And they would not only come back into the land, but they would become an exceedingly great army. That's Ezekiel 37.10. So what the world has been witnessing since 1948-67 and these wars on through the Hezbollah War and the Hamas War recently, in my estimation, is the fashioning of this what Ezekiel calls will be an exceedingly great army. And I believe they obtain that title after they are victorious over the Psalm 83 war. Um, in 1948, the UN uh, Resolution 181 presented a partition plan where there would be a Jewish state, but there could also be an Arabs of Palestine or a Palestinian state. Back then they were called the Arabs of Palestine. The Arabs rejected that, and they told um, the Arabs of Palestine at that time to vacate so that they could uh, prevent Israel from being restored into the land as per the partition plan, destroy the Jewish state, and then the Arabs of Palestine could go back and have it all, not just You're the You're referring to the ones that lived in Israel proper, right? Uh, not the ones that lived in what was that, then Jordan, the Hashemite kingdom of Yeah, Jordan. primarily the, the Arabs who lived in Israel proper. Back then, of course, uh, in, in 135 A.D., they renamed that area Palestine, the Romans did. And it was never really a state, per se. It was always right. a, a grossly, loosely defined. Bill, keep going, because what you're talking about is how the refugee camps actually formed. Right. So keep you, going with you that. You have, you know, in, instead of assimilating the, Arab, the Arabs assimilating the refugees that became the byproduct of that miscalculation of 1948, instead of assimilating them into their homeland, as the Jewish people did with the Jewish refugees, there were plenty of Jewish refugees, too, and Israel assimilated them, uh, the Arabs did not assimilate them. They uh, kept trying to put them in between themselves and Israel and, and kept trying to say that they are deserving of a state of their own. And they're not technically a people, per se. They're a mishmash of dif different ethnicities that has an ancestral roots from all those surrounding nations. Bill, uh, I want to jump into, uh, I want to fast forward to the future now. We'll talk about the past. But before I do that, just talk briefly about just, how old this conflict is? Where, where's the, what are the origins of this conflict? Well, I think it, it's going to stem back from the time of Abraham about 4,000 years ago. Pretty long time ago. Exactly. And Abraham was given this uh, covenant, the Abrahamic covenant. And, and at the time, you had uh, conflicts developing immediately with his siblings, with Ishmael versus Isaac, who was the rightful heir, uh, between Hagar and, you know, who, who mothered Ishmael, but Sarah is the mother of Isaac, and they, they had a conflict. There was this coveting of the Abrahamic, Abrahamic content of the, you know, the covenant going on from way back when. And then, of course, you had Jacob, who was the son of Isaac, and, and he had a twin brother, Esau, who was technically the firstborn. And he passed on the birthright, and Jacob got it. So you had these camps uh, incubating with this uh, ancient hatred, Olami Ba in the Hebrew. It comes up in Ezekiel 35.5. And it's been going on from time immemorial. And it went on, and, and the adversaries of Israel found it more favorable to embrace this hatred than to, to bless and support Israel throughout time because part of the Abrahamic covenant was land granted from the river of Egypt in Genesis 15, 18, on, which would be the Nile, on the way to the river Euphrates, which courses through Iraq and up through Syria. And, of course, that's a lot of land. It's about ten times as much land as Israel right. occupies today. And that was land that these enemies of Israel lived on. So it wasn't convenient for them to have to forfeit land and, and support Israel and bless Israel. So it's been a problem that's incubated throughout time, and it was alive and awaiting in a religious package called Islam in 1948. And not going away anytime soon, obviously. Uh, no, it won't go away until Israel defeats the Psalm 83 Confederacy. Talk more about the Psalm 83 War, which I've never heard terms Psalm 83 War. That's... You actually have a Psalm 83 newsletter, don't you? Um, oh, I have numerous articles that I've written. Um, a lot of them have been featured on WorldNet Daily and elsewhere about Psalm 83. I don't specifically have a newsletter per se, but my website, prophecydepot.com, people can go read all We're going to put articles. that up now so people can check that out. I want to invite you to go uh, to that website and look at some of the great materials. Okay, Psalm 83 war. Uh, where is this all heading? Um, this is heading real soon. The uh, Arab nations... Uh, that will confederate, and I listed who they were, um, they are about to come together, in my estimation, to uh, 
come against Israel, that the name Israel would exist no more. We know that attitude exists over there, even Iran, who coincidentally